This is my DIY robot brain. It has a ton of functionality and can be put into a bunch of different vehicles. Real quick, it has an FPV camera and video transmitter that sends live video back to my goggles, a long range 900 megahertz receiver, a flight controller with GPS so I can do autonomous waypoint missions, and a servo breakout cable so that I can easily swap this between different devices. And I know, this thing looks super complicated, but it's actually just a bunch of really common FPV drone parts. Here is a quick list of every single component that I used, and I will link them all in the description, so if you want to make this at home, you can. So, now that we got all of our parts laid out, we can go ahead and start building this thing. Really quick, I do need to mention that this flight controller right here didn't end up working, and I had to choose a different one, but I found a great one from Maytech, and I will link that in the description. Right, so the first thing we have to do is put some firmware on this flight controller. I had two different options, ArduPilot or iNav. And for this, I decided to go with iNav because it's so easy to swap to different vehicle types. I could have a rover or I could have a tailed aircraft or a flying wing, and I could switch all these settings so incredibly quickly with iNav that it just made sense. ArduPilot is probably the better flying software. It's definitely more capable at this time, but iNav is just too hard to beat for how quickly you could get it set up. Now, let's jump into a build compilation so you can see this thing get put together. And that's pretty much the build. I gotta tidy up some wires and get some things configured in iNav specifically for the aircraft that I'm gonna put this on first. But besides that, we're good to go. So, for the aircraft I decided to build this into first, I pulled this old foamy out of my attic. I've had this thing since, I think, 2013, and it has been through the roughest of times. It was one of the first fixed-wing aircraft that I had. I remember taking this thing to a local park right by my job uh, during lunch breaks and stuff and just crashing this thing to pieces and gluing it back together. I feel like it's only fitting that I give this thing a new life as an autonomous warbird. So after watching this part back, I felt like it needed some more explaining. This cable goes to the speed controller, which controls the motor. These two go to the elevator and the rudder servos. And this set goes to the ailerons. These are the servos that allow the plane to fly. And they're going to plug directly into the flight controller system. Or more specifically, this little breakout board that I took from a Crossfire micro receiver. It's nice because it also acts as power distribution for the servos.
All right, after slapping this robot brain on the airframe, it was finally time for me to mate in this thing. There was just one problem. I've become so used to flying my freestyle drones or my super overpowered FPV airplanes that I forgot how to fly a normal RC airplane. And I just didn't give it enough throttle on takeoff. Nice. Okay, so for the second round, we definitely stepped up the throttle a little bit and everything went way better. So the plane flew around the park really nice, and I was kind of surprised because these were totally default settings. There was one little issue where I was getting distortion in my video feed because the propeller on the plane was so shaky. I think if you want to do these Warbird style planes, you need to upgrade the propeller so it's not scale and you'll probably get a lot nicer video. So shortly after landing, I knew I wanted to switch this into a different airframe and see how it would do. This plane here is a Skyhunter Mini, and I was able to do the brain swap in about 4 minutes. This is the maiden flight, and it went absolutely perfect. I figured you guys would want to see some really awesome flight footage, so just kick back and watch me test the return home function and chase my other friends with their airplanes. So the Skyhunter Mini flew absolutely amazing, and I definitely want to rebuild this aircraft with its own dedicated flight control system, but for now, I wanted to put this on an RC car just to prove that it can be done. All we have to do is load some defaults for an RC rover, click a few more buttons, and we're good to go. Longtime viewers of the channel know that I've already been building FPV RC cars for a long time but this one is going to be able to drive by itself. So I'm in the mission control section of iNav, and from here you can upload a waypoint mission and tell your car or airplane to execute this waypoint mission by flipping a switch on your radio. Now, there's just one little issue with me sending my FPV RC car on an autonomous waypoint mission throughout my neighborhood. I suck at autonomous waypoint missions. Now, this is something that I want to get better at and I want to do more on my channel in the future. So if anybody has any recommendations or some tips, definitely let me know in the comment section and I'll check them out. Now, this failure actually got me thinking. Something that I've wanted in RC for as long as I could remember is an autonomous FPV Velociraptor. Unfortunately, autonomous FPV Velociraptors are illegal in my part of the country, so I had to do the next best thing. FPV German Shepherd. 
This is my dog, King. I feature him on the channel all the time, and he's been absolutely awesome to work with. I did actually find out that I could hook up some lights and beepers to the servo outputs on the flight controller and control the directions that King looks. Now, King's an absolute stud, but after a few run-throughs with him, I've come to find that he's just a little too heavy on the gas. Overall, I think my guy is just a little bit too intense. He's only a year and a half, and he probably needs a little bit more training before we go autonomous FPV German Shepherd with him. Now, before I wrap up this video, I just want to mention that I think this thing could be something a lot bigger than what I can make it alone. I'm hoping the community could come together and we can whittle this thing down to the point that it fits inside of a GoPro Hero Session mount, and it can be easily switched between a bunch of different aircraft. Components are insanely expensive right now with the whole chip shortage thing. It's kind of crazy that we have a full system built into every single vehicle that we mess around with. Now, I'm not good at 3D printing or designing things like that. But if you are and you would like to help out, please comment down below, share ideas with other people. You can ask me questions and I'm happy to help out. A device like this could be installed on virtually any RC aircraft and give it the ability to have a maximum and minimum flight altitude, which can help new pilots keep from crashing.